CBS Sports Network did a great job. And uh, to Stephen Waldron, to Kelly, to everybody over there at um, at the uh, at the network, I just want to say thank you because this is. I walked in here this morning. I had such a big smile on my face. You know what? I am convinced that everybody's just absolutely miserable out there in the streets of New York. I was walking through the streets yesterday. Everybody's pissed off. Yeah. Horns blowing. Sure. And everybody's just like, and this is our our little Shangri-La right here. Our Christmas Shangri-La. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Take the halls to impress Boomer. Go screw. <laughs> Run! <laughs> and avoid a violent future. We're going to eat your children. <laughs> lots of cheer and lots of glamour. Another effing disgrace. <laughs> or we get smashed with a hammer. A pile of crap. <laughs> It absolutely, unabashedly sucks. <laughs> Merry freaking Christmas. <laughs> Not this year, baby. Oh. This year is perfect. They they hit all the right numbers. I love the garland. Mm -hmm. Love the Christmas tree behind me. I had to put uh, Henrik up there a little bit higher as a... Uh, as an ornament, uh, the, the New York Ranger goalie. Well, they paid homage to everybody's teams here. This is great. Yes. You got the Dolphins for Eddie. You got the Vikings for me. The Islanders are in there. The Nets for Jerry. The Knicks. And, of course, as you mentioned, Henrik is up there as well. Yes. And no, uh, no Yankees or Giants that I could see. All right. Well, well we got Phil Sims here. There's a Devils yeah. thing on there as well for Jerry. Oh, there is a oh, Devils yeah. thing yeah. on there as well. There it is, right here. Look at that. I think it's the uh, Zamboni. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, I got to tell you, I feel great this morning. Uh, I was a little tired because last night I had a little bit of an appearance that I had to go to over here in Tribeca. It was the uh, Gotham uh, Technology Group Christmas party. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it was about ready to explode. Thank you. It was about ready to explode as I was taking some photos with folks and they were bringing over some Casamigos tequila as oh the boy. night was going on, you know? Yeah. And there was a moment there where we I had, had a, two different nights, me and you. Right. There, there was a moment there where I had to decide am I staying and am I going to go knee deep into this thing? Because they had an after party that was going to go to like three o'clock or something. Yeah. Or. Was I going to try to get out of there at a reasonable hour? Now, they had the game on and everything, so I could see part of the game. I could, yeah. I could follow what was going on. And, um, you know, I introduced the band last night, our buddies, uh, Super Trans Am. Super Trans Am. Yes, yeah, Super Trans Am. You showed me a picture of them. They really have the outfits and everything from yeah, the 70s. So here, here's, yeah, there it is. Here's the photo from last night. Yes. Yeah. And uh, these guys were great last night. And as soon as I started singing, I'm thinking, am I staying or am I going? Am I staying or am I going? And I decided, you know what? I'm going to go. Okay. I was going to say, if you were up till 3 o'clock in the morning, Do you morning, know how many people today. came up to me last night and said, it's a football Friday. It's a, you know, it's going to be a great feel-good Friday. And I'm like, guys, right now, I'm just thinking if I could just get up out of bed this morning <laughs> or tomorrow morning <laughs> and make it to work, you know, we'll, we'll try to do the best we can. And then, lo and behold, I come in here and I see this just beautiful Christmas decorations, and I'm like, I'm ready to roll. Uplifted your spirit. Yes, 100%. Exactly see, this what is you what need. Christmas is supposed to do. Yeah, of course. And our buddy Rick Froyo, just so you know, he's the guy that owns Adder Lee downstairs. Yeah. So he's in the electric business. He flipped the switch for the Christmas tree over there at uh, Rockefeller Center. Oh, tremendous. So on Wednesday, Wednesday night. Yes. Yeah. So he's a, he's a celebrity, I guess, of some sort for doing that. That. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, you got that call, man. You know, so right. Going so I, I am. I'm all jacked up. This Christmas party was great last night, and I'm just, I'm just, I'm very proud of myself for not staying. So, what time did you end up getting home then? Uh, you know, eleven thirty. Oh, okay. See, that's would be late for the rest of us. But you're saying it was either eleven thirty or three a.m. Yeah, I was okay. thinking almost three a.m. and just kind of coming, just coming like, right in, like Jerry did yesterday. Yeah, but Jerry wasn't drinking the entire time. Right, I would have. You would have had to probably do the, the live reads for me, yes. <laughs> just like I did the day after the Super Bowl in two thousand and nineteen. <laughs> yes, yeah. but I, I have to say it was a great party, man, and it was at the Tribeca rooftop, which is right down here in Desprosis. And, uh, man, it's a great space. They got, they had the band. They had the DJ going. They had everything going. It was just an awesome night. Oh, good. Awesome night. That's so great. Big thank you to Gotham Technology Group for inviting me to be a part of it and to see our boys, Super Trans Am. They were ripping it last night. Super Trans Am was ripping it. Yes. Uh, all right. So you're a little bit surprised at the outcome with the yes. Bills dominating uh, the Patriots last night. You also thought that both those quarterbacks were going to have better days than they ended up having throughout the air. I mean, 
if you think, you know, the Jets and what it means for the Jets, as we were talking about all week, if the Bills won and the Patriots lost, like what happened, then you feel like the Patriots get knocked down a peg, which is fine because the Patriots have the tiebreaker over the Jets. But if you the Bills had lost, you had a shot at the division. That's now well, sort of that, out there. That, that would be this weekend. Right. Now, when you take a look at what happened and you say, okay, how does it affect the Jets? Well, the Jets still have to play the Bills. And they've already beaten the Bills once. That's right. So they're a game behind them if they can win this weekend. Mm -hmm. And if they're a game behind them and they win this weekend, they still have a shot sure. at the, uh, at the uh, AFC East crown. So it's not completely out of the realm of possibility that that could happen. But they have to win. And the number one question that I was asked last night from every Jet fan, what about Mike White? What about Mike White? What about Mike White? I mean, it was just a Mike White, like, discussion from, you know, start to finish. Yeah. And everybody is fascinated by this young man and fascinated by the story. And now the question is, can he do it again? That's really yeah. what it comes down to. And I fully believe that that he will. And I've watched a lot of Jets football this year, all of it. I've watched a lot of Vikings football this year. I know what these two teams are all about. If things go the way that they have gone for both of these teams in recent memory, especially last week with the passing game with Mike White, then I believe the Jets win this game. This is not a good matchup for the Minnesota Vikings. Any team that's got a defense like the Jets have, pressure on the quarterback, a great corner in Sauce Gardner that's going to give Justin Jefferson potentially some problems, and the fact that Mike White can throw the ball down the field and he could find those open wide receivers – Every single week, there's open wide receivers running all over the place in the Vikings defense. I think that Mike White's going to have another very, very good game. And I do believe the Jets win. I think he keeps it rolling this week. I don't know if it's going to continue throughout the rest of the season, but I think for this very this week, Sunday at 1 o'clock, I think he does it again. I mean, if he did it in the rain, for crying out loud, he's going to be able to do it so, in a dome. There's really just one thing that worries me when it comes to the Jet defense. And I know the Jet defense has been good. They've had the one real big signature win and that was the home game against buffalo now they've gone on the road and they've won with very little offense so that's a testament to their defense but you see who they have played when it comes down to the office offenses some of the worst offenses in the league and in some cases a backup quarterback uh you know much like what happened with miami when miami came in here so miami played with a backup quarterback you know, you lost to Joe Burrow in Cincinnati. They scored 27 points on you. Uh, you beat uh, Kenny Pickett. You beat the backup in Miami. You beat Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. They were in the middle of their swoon at that point in time, and their offense was terrible. You beat Denver out in Denver. They suck mm -hmm. their offense. Uh, you, you lost to New England, and New England's offense isn't that great, and you saw that last night. And then came the Buffalo victory where you actually – did something defensively, and you got after Josh Allen. So that that's the performance right there that I'm hanging kind of like my decision-making this weekend against your Vikings. Well, you know, the Vikings have a very similar story is what you just pointed out with the Jets. Their one signature win was against Buffalo, but it was up at Orchard Park. That was, was a freak show. Right. They also, they also beat Aaron Rodgers and the Packers in week one, who have had a miserable season. Uh, they also played the backup quarterback in Miami and won and won that game. The really the only big difference that would be Skylar Thompson, by the way. Right, and then Teddy Bridgewater ended up coming in and playing as well that week. The only real difference is and the Vikings got completely blown out by the Cowboys, where you haven't really seen that with the Jets getting completely blown out. Right. Um, but the only real difference is the Vikings beat the Patriots on Thanksgiving and the Jets lost to the Patriots twice. And, and that's because, well, that's because of, you know, Zach Wilson. They weren't getting much from their offense. Right, right, exactly. Now the big question is, is what can Mike White, uh, you know, continue to do? Can he do what he did against the Bears? The Bears are probably the second or third worst team in the league right now. Especially yeah. when you don't have Justin Fields. The big thing the big thing about this game going to Minnesota is not just your own defense trying to stop Justin Jefferson and Dalvin Cook and, you know, Kirk Cousins and all this other stuff, but it's your offense matching the point total that you that you think that Minnesota's gonna put up, even though the the Jet defense is, is worthy. Can the Jet defense hold Minnesota to twenty three or less points? Yes, they can. Absolutely. You believe can. that. Yeah, I, yeah, I do. So I mean, if you think about the best defenses that the 
that the Vikings have faced, you'd say the Commanders are one of those defenses? Yep, they yep. only scored 20 points against the Commanders. Right, on the road in Washington. Right. Do you think the Cowboys are one of those defenses? Yeah, yep. All right, they scored three points against the Cowboys. Would you say the Eagles are one of those defenses? Uh, I would say they were one of those defenses. Their defensive line has taken a few hits. All right. Their running game, their their run defense hasn't been as good the last three weeks. So they scored seven points against the Eagles. Um, the only defense that is a legit defense that they actually put up uh, big points against, well, you know, the Bills game, as we said, that was a freak show game. But that one and then the Patriots, they put 33 points up against the Bills and the Patriots. Okay. So those are the ones. But these other very good defenses that they have faced, they have not done well against. So the Jets are the fourth-ranked defense in the NFL in terms of yards given up. Yeah. Pretty damn good. I mean, they're one of the best in football, clearly. And the, and, and and the, Minnesota, and the Minnesota Vikings are the 31st ranked defensive yep. guards given up. This is what I've been telling you. This is what I've been telling you. You know, and the reason why they've been able to hang around and win games is winning turnover battles and then keeping teams out of the end zone at the end of games and being able to come back and win games. Yeah, That's I, how I, I, I think the Vikings are the number two team in terms of turnover differential or maybe the number three team. Number three team now. Well, they're tied with Baltimore. I guess they're they're plus six, and Baltimore's a plus eight. So, yeah. So, ball it it goes. You know, Philadelphia, Baltimore, the Vikings, the Cowboys, uh, the Seahawks, and the Giants, and they're all teams with winning records, of course. Yeah. So, I mean, th this is. Uh, I know what a good matchup is for them. I know what a bad matchup is for them. The Jets and Mike White. Now, for Zach Wilson, be a great matchup for. Him. But it's Mike White, and Mike White hits those open wide receivers. He knows where to throw the ball. It's going to be indoors. I just, it's it's a bad matchup for them. And there's also, you know, a, a guy who, a diehard Viking fan I talk to from time to time who sends me a DM, said the same thing to me. He goes, we're losing this week. Really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, wow. and it's just, it's because we know what this team is. And, and and on top of it, I've seen all these Jet games. I know who they are, too. I think it's a terrible matchup. For I, you know, here I am thinking that you're all activated as a Viking fan. I am. All of a sudden, you're telling me that no, your team's going to lose this week. I, I am. I am activated. But I'm being realistic about it. All right. Now, I mean, there's, there's teams on this schedule that's coming up for the Vikings that are great matchups for them. This is not one of them. This is not one of them. Yeah. This just isn't one of them. So I and, and of course, I'm activated. Of course, I'm going to be rooting my ass off for them and want them to win. I'm just being realistic about it. I mean, if I was in that, you know, if I was breaking down film with Kevin O'Connell, I wouldn't be like, we're going to lose this game. I would True. say these are the things we need to do to make sure we don't lose the so game. What, what does your offensive line look like right now? Well, Christian Darisaw still needs to be cleared. He's the big left tackle. Yes. Uh, outside of that, everybody is healthy. But, you know, that is a big deal. He dealt with a concussion. I did not see yesterday. It was a crazy day for me, so I don't didn't see if he ended up practicing yesterday. Yeah. But he's been out for the last two games with a concussion. And, yeah, see, the Vikings not really putting a timetable on Christian Darius. So he's not playing this week. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't sound like it. Yeah, you know, it was amazing last night as we get ready to go to break. Uh, I meet this guy from Ghana. Take a photo with the guy from Ghana. And I'm like, uh, how's your World Cup team doing? And I and I and I and I had read a story about the Ghana World T Cup versus Uruguay. Uh, I think back from 2010, like that day, like yesterday. I don't know why I read it, but I read it. Yeah. And <clears throat> there was this whole thing where this Uruguayan, Uruguayan, right, player, in the last minute of the of the game against Ghana, handed the ball because he didn't he didn't want to go into the net. Mm -hmm. like it was like Ghana was pushing, pushing, pushing. Yeah. And Uruguay guy came up and, I guess, handed the ball to keep it out of the net. And so yesterday, that guy that did that was, I guess, or two days ago, was giving a press conference. And they the, uh, the Ghanaian press, I guess, was asking Ghan him. Ghanaian. Ghanaian, whatever. Mm -hmm. Was asking him whether or not, you know, he wants to apologize for the play that he made. And the guy goes, I'm not apologizing. I did what I was supposed to do. Your guy missed the free kick. I guess I don't know where the free kick was from. I'm assuming from that goal line area, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, so I was asking, I was asking this guy last night. It was like the weirdest thing. I had this conversation about the World Cup in Ghana and Uruguay. You or sure you got home at 11:30? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I said you guys didn't kill this guy when he came home. Did no, you? no, no, no. He goes, no, but we might, we may if we don't, if we lose this game because I oh, guess okay. it's Ghana Uruguay playing again. All right, so the, there will be players that will be killed if they lose. No, this I, game. I don't think so. Okay, I, don't think so. I hope not. All right, yeah, me too. That would be a that tragic. would really be sorry, but I couldn't believe I was having a full-on conversation about the World Cup, 
Ghana, Ghana versus soccer. Uruguay. Yeah, I know. Is yeah. it Uruguay or Uruguay? I think it's Uruguay, I want to say. Uruguay? Yeah. Eddie, what do you think? What Gio said. Yeah. Uruguay. Uruguay. Uruguay, Al? Uruguay. You sure? Mm-hmm. You positive? Yeah. Yes. How many times have you said that in your life? Once, just now. Okay. <laughs> so you have no idea. <laughs> All right. It is Boomer and Gio on the fan and CBS Sports Network. Jerry Recco is going to join us in just a couple of minutes. 